Tomorrow, we're going to pursue that. But today, we've got to stay on track. <laughs> we're looking at the journey of glucose. So the first place that the liver will send the glucose, number one, is to the cell to be burnt as fuel. But on a high carbohydrate diet, you've got a lot of glucose left over. And so now the body stores it in what I call the most amazing fuel, quick fuel supply in the body. It's called glycogen. They're little molecules of glucose just sitting in your muscle cell waiting to be used. Do you wonder how you had the energy to exercise this morning? We only gave you broth last night. You only had aloe lemon water this morning and yet you did it. It's because of your glycogen stores. They're already sitting in your muscle cell and as soon as you move the body requiring more, they just pluck it, pluck it through the energy cycle, pluck another one through the energy cycle. What an amazing process. It actually brings me to that verse in the Bible at Psalm 139 verse 14 where the Bible says, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works and that my soul knows right well. So number two, the glucose is stored as glycogen. I call glycogen the diabetic's best kept secret because if blood sugar goes low, what do you do? Get on the exercise bike, <laughs> release your glycogen stores. In fact, one young man, a diabetic, he said to me, why didn't anyone tell me about glycogen? Now that's a, I can understand his frustration because, wow. Let's get back to glucose. So on a high carbohydrate diet, we've still got glucose left over because the cell can only store so much. By the way, the liver stores a little bit and this glycogen can be sent all over the body. Whereas the glycogen that's in the muscle cell, it's like in a prison, it can only be used by the muscle cell. And when you think about it, that's the cell that has probably the most demand on it. So what's the body going to do with the rest? What's the liver going to do with the rest of the, of the glucose? Well, we've got an amazing fuel depot, st fuel supply. I call it the basement stores. You know what the basement stores are? They're the fat cells. And what's happening to Americans today? Whew. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When I used to visit my daughter 25 years ago, I could go to a store and buy a small size. Today I have to go to a special, special section called the petite section. Because 40 years ago, 50 years ago, my size was actually a normal size. It's actually not a normal size today, which is crazy, isn't it? But Australia's, Australia's up, up, up equal with America here. 63% of Australians are obese or overweight. Whew. What's caused that? Here it is. It's the high carbohydrate diet. So the third place that the liver will send that excess glucose is as fat. Now what I've given you here is basic science. I might have mentioned earlier that I like to use the BHSC method Bible, history, science, and common sense. So with history, we've got the history of people who never used to eat a high carbohydrate diet because people used to make what they eat. And that all takes a long time. So what did people eat a lot of? Well, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride in her book, Gut and Psychology, she actually looks at the histories and she said, thick vegetable soups was probably one of the most common foods that people ate. You see, the mother would, on her fuel stove would put it in the corner and maybe she'd throw a bone or two in there as well, especially if they didn't have a lot of money, but the vegetables are cheap. So historically, people ate, on the whole, a lot of vegetables. And let's go back to even more primitive times when there wasn't refrigeration. If an animal was killed, they would dry a lot of it, they'd have a big feast for a couple of days, but they not. they may not meet they may not eat meat again for another month. What did they eat? A lot of vegetables, roots, things that they grew. So historically, you can see that. Now we're looking at scientifically. So when people are on this high carbohydrate diet, too much glucose is released. The body can only deal with so much, so it has to be stored in the fat cells. Now, Dr. Robert Atkins knew that science. So he looked at himself getting this, what we call spare tire, so he decided to do an experiment on himself. He decided to stop all carbohydrates. What did he eat? He, he ate a lot of vegetables, okay? 
And a lot of people don't realize that, with the exclusion of the potato. So he, he was eating a lot of fiber. And he knew also that the gastrointestinal tract needed to move through the next two food groups. He ate a lot of meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs. So there was his protein. And meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs was also supplying another food group, which was fat. Remember, he just experimented on himself. A few things happened. His weight just fell off. Why? Well, he's not supplying the quick-release glucose stores. And so his liver has to start breaking down his fat stores. It's called gluconeogenesis, creating glucose from the fat stores. He was never hungry. Why? Because these are the three food groups that keep the food in the stomach longer. Fiber binds up the glucose and it slowly releases it. Protein, well, protein's broken down specifically in the stomach. And fat... It coats the food a little bit, so it takes a little bit longer to break down. That's good news, because it means we don't have to be eating all 